first we have Drake and Kendrick, and then we have Chris Brown and Quavo. I'm going to start a cigar beef. You see these two channels right here? See these two channels? This one right here? You see this fox right here? You see this assassin right here as well? Do they have access to more dragons than I do? Yes, they do. Do they give you more descriptions of taste notes and a little bit more sophisticated? Yes. Do you know what I have that they don't have? An accent. You listen to their videos and it sounds horrible. So this one is the Flor Selva uh, Año de Dragon. And today we will be reviewing Flor de Selva Año de Dragon. They can't pronounce these words. And this is cigars. It's a Spanish culture type of thing because if it's not influenced by Spanish, why is everything with a Spanish name? Robusto, Toro, Corona, and all the brands. Padron, Flor de Silva. They have all these different companies that's predominantly Spanish. Where's the origin of a lot of these cigars? República Dominicana. Try to say that, Eric and Tony. Honduras, Nicaragua, or Nicaraguense. Hmm? Hmm? This is my diss. This is my cigar beef towards these two individuals. So today we are reviewing... Flor de Selva, Año de Dragón. And, oh, look, look at the side right there, right? It's kind of hard to see, right? Let's see. Hecho totalmente a mano. Made completely by hand or totally by hand. Oh, what's this? What does that say right there? Honduras desde 1995. Can you do that, Eric? Tony? A any more writings on this? Let's see. Any, any more writings? On the wrapper, it says Año de Dragón. With the accent on the O, because Dragón. And that's about it. Oh, Edición Limitada. <laughs> Once this video goes live, I will no longer be a part of the Legion. I may be banned. Uh, it was a great time. I'll make a separate Twitter video and another diss for, I guess, leaving the Legion because I'm about to get kicked out. <laughs> and honestly, guys, I love Eric and Tony. They're both two individuals that's making my experience with cigars way better. And they're slowly teaching me to be, I guess, a bit more of a better reviewer for you guys. I'm young. I'm 26, about to be 27. I'm about to be smoking for seven years now. A lot of the information, a lot of things I'm doing now, especially for reviews, are things I started about three to four years ago. There's still a lot of crafts for me to perfect and try to master. You may not, obviously you can't master everything. You can't perfect everything, but to understand the palate, to break down the palate, to understand more of the taste notes and breaking a little bit more down with the cigar. That's something that's out of my field. And that's something I do want to learn. I have the luxury of these two amazing friends, Eric and Tony, who are currently working on stuff. Fast forward, all the kind of stuff. I do highly suggest you guys both check out both Tony. Also check out this Fox, which is smoking if you have one. Check them out. With that being said, let's get into today's review of Flor de Silva, Año de Dragón. This is the long boy. This is like the size of my head. A little bit, yeah. Almost the size of my head. This is a seven and a half by 52 double corona or doble corona. This is gonna be a long review. I'm gonna hurry the fuck up. Sorry for a long intro. I just gotta give my roses to individuals who have helped me on this journey. This is also a Honduras puro. Try to say that, Eric, Tony. <laughs> let me stop. Let me, I'm trying to get back in. Let me back in. Hopefully that makes up for my... Can I get back in, please? Please. 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 Tony, this clip is for you. Even though this is all Honduras, it's not all from the same location. The rapper is from Hamastran. J-A-M. 
A S T R A N. That's the wrapper. You have the binder in there. It's a combination of two regions of Honduras. The binders comes from Azacurpa and Olancho, Honduras. And lastly, the company of Maya Silva states that with the filler comes from various regions of Honduras. They didn't put a specific region for the filler. It comes from various farms from Honduras. So it is a poodle because it's all Honduran, but it's not from the same source. Since this is a 2024 celebration of Year of the Dragon, they made 2024 boxes, 2024 boxes, all containing 10 of these cigars, MSRP at 2450, meaning a box will cost you about $245. So this bad boy is about 50 cents less than the Gurkhas you could get. But I'm going to test to see if this cigar is worth $24 and 50 cents. And even test to see if the cigar is an ash or a trash. First concern already is happening. They glued the foot band to the cigar. And as I'm trying to slowly spin it to have it come out intact, I heard a crack, which is not good. I'm holding the cigar, not tightly, but firmly enough so I could just carefully spin this, hopefully weaken the grasp. And I'm hearing it getting, I don't like that. I don't like that sound. Yeah. Points off. Points off. It ripped the wrapper. Luckily, it's near at the foot, but this could be a problem for a lot of people who are buying $24.50. This is more than your typical cigars. Your average price cigars are along the lines of between $8 to $12. This is double and triple your average cigars. So if I'm buying something that's above average when it comes from cost wise, I expect not this to happen. Yes, there's multiple and magnitudes of these cigars out there. You know, 10 boxes, you know, 10 in the box, 2,024 boxes, meaning just add a zero to that. 20,000 and 240 of these cigars are existing in the world. It's limited, but not extremely limited. But at the same time, people bust their ass for their money. And then they get a cigar where they have to fight to take the foot off. The foot band and it caused a rip. It's kind of hard to see it, but that wrapper is kind of loose now. You can actually see the line of the wrapper because now it's actually loose. Okay, the wrapper is very cedary. Ooh. It feels very herby and spicy. Woodsy on the wrapper. Some herbal spices on the foot. This is about to be a very, very blunt video. Lightning strike crack right down the middle. You can see. Let's see. Last cigar I was able to save by applying a little bit of saliva. Let's see if this happens. Let's see if it works. I'm just gonna cut it. I want y'all freaky people looking at me look at my, my mouth shut. Dry pull has this chalky chocolate to it. Whenever I mention chalky chocolate, that's more along the lines of like powdered chocolate, like the ones you get from Nesquik, Ovaltine, protein powders that has the chocolate taste to it. That's what I'm getting. Chocolate chocolate. A little bit of spice. A little bit of spice. Yeah. That last cold draw has spice to it. All right. Let's get into the first third. Ooh, off the first one too. Actually, no. 
We're going to go classic because this is my last dragon. Three oaky. Nutty. Spicy. But not as in like black pepper, white pepper. It's more like baking spices. Maybe a hint of black pepper, but these are more like baking spice compared to any other spices out there. It's not spicy in the retro. Like it doesn't really like make you cock back or kind of like not cringe. It's a nice spice. That is more along the lines of baking spices. Getting a little chocolate here. The finish has a little bit of a coffee note to it. Along the lines of a like, café con leche. It's sweet coffee. Not bold. Very sweet. And very sweet and mild. The part I mentioned before. That I was trying my best to show you the little cracks. This is what I mean. See it has this unraveling. See how it's unraveling. That's what I saw. Instead of me complaining and bitching and moaning, let's actually look at the ash of the cigar. This is a ashy white. Part of it is gray. Kind of on the almost grayish some elements. So there is quality tobacco in here. It's burning quite evenly despite that gash that you're forced to make because of the foot band. It's burning quite evenly. And the ash color is quite nice. Mostly gray, partially white. Looks pretty. With that being said, I'm going to smoke into the first third. I'll be right back to let you guys know my thoughts. Oh. All right, I'm at this point of the cigar. This is definitely a third in. Remember, this is a seven and a half. Double Corona. Oh, this is a third. It's a cigar. Nothing really changed. The notes are just notes. It's not a bad combination. Tastes decent. It's not the best in the world. It's not a bad cigar. You have this herbal spice to it. A little bit of a slight roasted coffee. A little nuttiness to it. Quite a bit of cedar. But it's not overwhelming. It's not intense when it comes to the flavor notes. It's very relaxed. It's very smooth. It's very tranquil. That's the best way I can say it. Tranquil. It's not something that's going to be like overly powerful and it's not going to smack your palate with a burst of just intense flavors. This is like a very medium body cigar. It's not too light and it's not too harsh. It's right smack down the middle where it's pleasant. It's a nice smoke. And $24. I don't feel like it is at the moment. Then I have to relight it once at all. The ash is slowly turning a little bit more white with obviously the middle part being more grayish. But as it burns, there's not much of a canoe happening. Slightly uneven on one side. But that could easily be fixed on its own. Taste notes, nothing really changed. I already told you how the second third is. You see the same thing as the first third. So I'm going to go ahead and see you guys on the last third. I'm at here with a cigar. It's actually gotten better. The thickness with the band. I didn't go up because, you know, there's a slit right about here. Can't really see it well, but there's a slit there. The flavors actually get a little more intensified, which is surprising. The first third, first third was good. Second third, 
kind of died down. This last third is getting a little bit more intense with the, this coffee chocolate taste. Mostly the coffee. We have this nice, we have this well-balanced symphony of nuts, chocolate, coffee, and spice. That's happening out of nowhere. Whatever I was getting in the beginning, it's like times two towards the end. Which is good. It's not bad. The bacon spice is still there, but now it's very subtle. I feel like there's a little bit more than just baking spices into this. It's more intricate. I don't know how to really like describe it. The best way to describe it is like seasonings, like Spanish seasonings. You have a little symphony of these notes that's like dancing all together at the same time. Like when you draw, everything's coming together as like finished entree dish. It's not like some cigars, how you take a puff and the puff itself has one note and then you retro it, that's a note, and then there's a finish that has a note. It's like a, it's a conglomerate, all flavors, all in one. So everything I described are all just mixed together in this one puff. So this is, that's, what, that's what I'm calling it a symphony because they're all working together very well, it's like perfectly balanced. With that being said, I'm going to wrap up my thoughts and I'm going to break down my ratings. And let's go with my number one, as always, appearance. When it comes to the band, this one right here, I feel like they could have put a little bit more details to the dragon. Because as you can see from the footage, it's hard to kind of make out that dragon. I feel like if they would have made the gold a little bit more gold, and put a little more details into that footband, it would have brought it out more. But to me, it feels kind of plain. You put it like that, the dragon's gone. You can't even see Anyo the Dragon. You just see parts of it. And when it comes to the actual band itself, again, it seems a little bit plain with that white and that type of metallic gold. It seems a little bland. If they would have followed the scheme of the red, it would have been kind of cool. But that metallic gold they use seems a little bit undervalued because it stays a little too hidden. So I'm going to give the appearance a six. Yeah, I'll give it a six. I feel like they could have used a different color scheme for the gold to make it pop a little more better, but they didn't. So I'm gonna give the appearance a six. For construction, draw was good. There's a slight resistance to it, which is a perfect amount of resistance. Smoke output, phenomenal. But the fact that when you take the band off, it rips the wrapper. And then the cap cut, kind of deconstructing the cigar, that's gonna leave a lot of people that have issues. And as I was looking up information on the cigar, some people left reviews saying basically the same thing where people bought a box of these or they bought singles and the review was the cigar wrapper broke, the cigar wrapper unraveled, the foot band destroyed the cigar. Everybody had the same complaint and it kind of ruins the cigar experience because one, you're paying $24.50 for a cigar and when you try your best to be as cautious as you can and it rips, it kind of puts you in a foul mood as you try to enjoy it. If you're just smoking just to smoke it, and you don't care. But when you're people like me who are reviewers, you care about that kind of element. So we as reviewers tried our best to market your cigars. And we're honest about it. Well, most of us are. And the fact that I cut the cap with a cutter that has a back into it so it doesn't overcut, as in this cutter right here, has a back into it so i purposely won't overcut it and even though i used that cutter it still cracked the foundation of the wrapper not only did it break the foot from the band it broke the cap from the cut so that's not a good thing let me give the construction a five and a half because i cut my cigar with precision and i 
took off the band very cautiously and it still broke. But imagine those who are used to just trying to slip off the band and it completely breaks the cigar. With that, I'm giving it a five and a half. For taste notes, beginning started off good. Second half was consistent. Last third was more intense. The flight notes were great. It had a good combination. Everything mixed well. Everything blended well. From the drawing to the retroling to the finish, everything was spot on. I don't really have much complaints about the taste notes. So that, I'm going to give it a 7.5. The cigar rating is a 6.8. Meaning it is barely passing with an ash. If they could tweak that issue with the band, with maybe the next project, it'll be better. Hopefully, Maya Selva Cigars can learn from this mistake. Whenever they do another Chinese Zodiac, or even any other cigar in a cigar foot band that big, hopefully they learn their lesson and not glue the foot band to the wrapper. Just slip it in, people can just slip it out and have no issues. With that being said, this concludes my review of the Flor de Silva Año de Dragón. Until next time, guys, as always, I love your faces, and I'm out. Peace.